One of the biggest discoveries from planet Earth in 2024 was a very bizarre discovery of something on the bottom of the ocean floor. The discovery that these unusual metallic rocks, sometimes referred to as manganese nodules, or more officially polymetallic nodules, that kind of resembles something like this if picked up, are not just enriched in minerals and in metals, potentially providing a free resource for a lot of different mining companies, but strangely enough, also seem to produce abiotic oxygen. Or essentially they produce oxygen without any life involved, completely through natural processes. And this was actually one of the biggest headlines in the last few months, with this discovery being referred to as the dark oxygen. Or in essence, the production of oxygen in entirely dark environments, without any photosynthesis and without any chemical reactions. Here this was done entirely through the process of electrolysis, mostly because these nodules also produce just a little bit of voltage, enough to turn water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. But because in some locations these nodules are all over the place, it essentially suggested that this could actually provide enough oxygen for various isolated biospheres and possibly huge biospheres involving lots of different organisms we've never really considered before. And that's because these nodules are mostly found in the so-called abyssal planes. The depths of 4 to 6 kilometers that technically represent 70% of all global oceans, potentially making this one of the largest, if not the largest, ecosystems on the entire planet. And this was of course a groundbreaking discovery, mostly because mining companies were actually trying to mine these, which we now think would cause a tremendous damage to the entire planet, possibly even collapsing entire food networks. Which is actually something we've discussed in one of the previous videos that you can find in the description below. But in essence, because we now are pretty certain quite a lot of oxygen seems to be generated by these unusual metallic nodules, the obvious next question to ask is, okay, but do these exist elsewhere? And could they also provide just as much oxygen to some other planet or some other moon somewhere out there? Which is kind of what this particular study decided to tackle. A somewhat hypothetical thesis trying to investigate how likely is life to exist somewhere out there and what kind of life might exist somewhere out there if these nodules are a kind of a universal feature of any world that contains an ocean. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss the dark oxygen discovery once again and talk about the potential astrobiological implications. But here, let's briefly start by discussing what we know about this and how likely these are to exist somewhere out there. So first of all, since this is actually a somewhat recent discovery, there are still a lot of unanswered questions. For example, electrolysis is assumed to be responsible for the production of oxygen, but even that is not 100% certain. We just know that these rocks definitely generate oxygen, and they seem to do so in the depths of the ocean in extremely dark environments. And so in other words, our planet seems to have always had the source of molecular oxygen that did not involve photosynthesis. But the biggest question here is of course, how exactly does any of this work and how exactly do these form? And the thing is both questions are still kind of unanswered. But what we do know about these particular nodules is that they seem to represent the slowest geological process on the entire planet. They seem to form in tiny layers usually involving iron or manganese hydroxides, with manganese being extremely important for various nodules found in the seawater. But they also involve the process of sedimentation, and so the actual nodule growth is ridiculously slow. Here it's actually believed to grow by just one centimeter every several million years. But it seems to be directly connected to precipitation of metals and rare earth minerals from the water itself. In other words, as long as there's sea water, and as long as it's moving around and contains metals and minerals in it, we kind of assume that these nodules will form over time. And though a lot of these are usually also associated with various hot springs and a lot of volcanic activity, it may not be necessary because we've actually discovered these even inside various lakes. But in reality, the formation of these nodules is still a huge mystery. For example, there are even papers that suggest that maybe biology is involved after all, and maybe this is actually a result of some kind of a microbiological activity. In short, nobody knows. But technically, 
we do expect them to exist in any ocean that contains metals and minerals, which seems to be true so far for all of the locations on planet Earth. And if so, it means that they can technically produce oxygen in a lot of different locations where no oxygen would be possible. And so, for example, let's imagine that we find something similar somewhere in the depths of the ocean of one of the moons of Jupiter. So since Europa, for example, is assumed to have a really deep ocean and potentially has a lot of hydrothermic activity as well, it might also have the ability to form these nodules in the depths of its oceans. And so assuming that dark oxygen is produced there as well, the next question is, well, what kind of life could be supported by all of this, assuming those moons and those oceans receive just as much dark oxygen as we receive right here on planet Earth? And so in essence here, we're imagining a scenario with abiotic oxygen produced inside the oceans and some kind of a primitive microscopic life surviving in these oceans. But because these rocks don't produce as much oxygen as, for example, typical algae, this would dramatically limit the size of these organisms, allowing us to speculate how big they can get. But their size would depend on how they actually use the oxygen. If they can only absorb it through diffusion, they're not really going to be able to get too large. Here, rough calculations suggest that for organisms using diffusion, which is basically when everything, all of the nutrients and all of the oxygen goes through the cell directly, can reach maximum sizes of maybe 0.1 to 1 millimeter across. This is based on the estimates for the dark oxygen concentration inside of these dark oceans. And at these sizes, this is actually comparable to what we usually find in the oceans on Earth as well. But if we consider something more complex, such as something using internal circulation systems, so here we're talking about things like heart and various organs, the size limit goes up to about 10 centimeters maximum, which is basically because circulation systems allow various animals to deliver oxygen to various tissues much more efficiently. Which means that for these types of oceans with this dark oxygen, hypothetically, the largest animal that could exist would be about 10 centimeters in size. But more intriguingly, when trying to calculate the total possible biomass in these oceans, the overall value calculated in this study seems to be somewhat comparable to what we usually find in the oceans on Earth as well. As high as 3 to 30 grams per square meter, which is technically even higher than what we usually find in these abyssal regions. And that means that in theory, these unusual nodules can actually support quite a lot of life as long as the life is relatively small and can easily create permanent ecospheres, helping them survive without any photosynthesis and possibly even without ever seeing the sun. As a matter of fact, hypothetically, this suggests that we don't even need the sun anymore to have these potentially habitable conditions. In theory, the discovery of this dark oxygen suggests we can have life on any object that can have a liquid ocean. But naturally, because all of these are super recent discoveries, all of this is just a speculation. For example, we have no idea what type of microorganisms rely on this dark oxygen or have adapted to living in these conditions here on Earth and what metabolic requirements they might have otherwise. We also have no idea if any of the larger organisms, such as for example some kind of a fish, require this dark oxygen for survival. And much more importantly, we have no idea what effects this had on the evolution and the advances of life on planet Earth. But because of this discovery, we actually now have a much higher chance of potentially discovering some kind of life out there. And that's because even though planets like Earth seem to be relatively rare, various ice worlds containing oceans, including various ice moons, seem to be super common. And so if all of them can actually form these unusual dark oxygen nodules, it would suddenly increase the chances for extraterrestrial life by a huge margin. And so if one day we discover that this is actually a universal phenomenon that seems to happen on all ocean worlds, this might suddenly give a huge boost to a lot of astrobiological fields, giving new hope and giving new target in search for extraterrestrial life. But first, all of this has to be of course confirmed. For example, we still have to confirm the existence of oceans around various moons of Jupiter and we then have to discover what's inside of them. Luckily, we have a few missions going to Jupiter really soon, such as the JUICE spacecraft you see right here, whose mission is basically that, investigating moons and discovering what's actually going on inside of them. And so for all we know, in the next decade or so, 
We're going to be discovering signs of life in a lot of these moons around the solar system, which would of course imply that something extremely similar happens around other star systems as well. But until those discoveries, and until future studies, at least for now we're going to assume that this is just maybe a bit of a speculation. Right now we don't really have any evidence for any of this, the only thing we know for sure is that these nodules seem to produce oxygen. But why, how, or what effect it has, we don't know. Once we do, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the one full person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.